Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today I'm revisiting Blue Black Zombies, which has been in Standard for a long time, but never really managed to see the light of day in a competitive setting. But we did get a few new tools in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan that might revitalize the archetype, such as a Roaming Throne, which can name a zombie and then double all our zombie triggers, of which there are many in this deck. Then we still get to play with Necro Duality to double all our zombies when they enter the battlefield, including Roaming Throne naming zombies zombie, since it will enter as a zombie, so we'll immediately get to make a copy, and then double roaming throne can go pretty crazy in this deck. And then especially Champion of the Perished, getting double triggers can grow into a huge threat, and this is an excellent one-drop for the archetype. And then we can also count on Cavern of Souls now, not only fixing our colors, but also making our zombies uncounterable. On occasion you might also want to name Golem to make sure roaming throne resolves, because on the stack it's not a zombie just yet. And then we also get to play with a Greedy Freebooter at 1 mana, just as Sacrifice Fodder, since we have 8 exploit creatures in the deck between Skull Scab and at 3 mana Felstinger, which will also benefit from Roaming Throne as we get to maybe double exploit, and in the case of Felstinger afterwards also draw 4 cards at the cost of 4 life if we'd like, can also go upstairs to maybe close out the game if the opponent is low enough, so Felstinger also gets a lot better now with the Roaming Throne in the deck. And then uh, the Freebooter, of course, can help us make treasures, cry if we sacrifice it. So we just want some cheap creature we don't really mind sacrificing, even if it's not a zombie. And then we've got some cheap spot removal with cut down and go for the throat. And then we need a lot of zombies for the deck to function. Tainted Adversary as a 2-3 death touch is an excellent blocker early. And later in the game we can sink more mana into it to make those decayed zombie tokens and get additional plus one counters. Not the best with Roaming Throne. Even though we can double the trigger, we still need to pay for the extra copy. So it's not all that helpful. Then there's the Scab, a 2-3 giving other zombies we control one extra power. And then a Skull Scab, a 2-2 with Exploit. And whenever a creature we control exploits a non-token creature, we get to make a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So important that it says a non-token, since our deck will be making lots of tokens. So if we want to get the most out of Skull Scab, again better to sacrifice something like a greedy freebooter. And then at 3 mana besides Felstinger, we've got 4 copies of Headless Rider, saying whenever the Rider or another non-token zombie we control dies, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. So this is also quite nice alongside Roaming Throne, as we now get to double the zombie tokens. And then at the mana base besides Cavern has lots of blue-black dual lands for mana fixing. We also need enough black mana to be able to cast our Freebooter early, and some of our removal spells. And then we also get to play with a new Restless Reef as a creature land that can mill for when it attacks, but we're mostly just interested in a 4-4 death touch, and then the channel lands offer a tiny bit more utility as well. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see what the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand, we'll definitely need to draw a few more lands along the way, but I'll try it. Can start with a tapped marsh, and then a shorts on turn 2 into maybe a scab. Opponent on humans. Could also go for a skull scab here. Still blocks the initiate. And now if we draw third land, we might want to play Fell Stinger and Exploit, and that way we get to trigger Skull Scab an additional time as well. Alright, now with the Vanguard they can attack. No third lane, sadly. We'll just play the Blade Stitched. Could attack back. Adlin is next. Can still block a powered up token at least, so no attacks. Probably time for. One of our three drops here, and it's a close call. Might just be Felstinger, Sacrifice, Skull Scab to try and hit our next land drop, as opposed to Headless Rider, which doesn't block all that well. Still no land. So hopefully we'll get one next turn. Adeline attacking kind of implies an Iganjo in hand. Alright, 
never mind, they get lost. So we can block Adlin all that profitably. Unless we want to double block here. I think we just take these trades instead. And then now Roaming Throne is an option. Could also Champion plus Headless Rider. And then Headless Rider would be 4 power, so could maybe trade for Adlin as well. And then if we play Throne afterwards, we get to trigger Champion twice. That might be better. And then now if any trades happen, we'll get some zombies in return. Officers acceptable. They might be playing a second caller here if they're running Cavern and Plaza. Adlin attacks. So go to trade for Headless Rider. Or at least try to. And there's another get lost. Okay, I think it's time for Roaming Throne. And then with a land going Necro Duality, Champion would be awesome. And Impakal makes sense. So their opponent is now empty-handed. And we can eat the officer and eat some of the other tokens as well. Alright, no land. Could go exploring with the map to try and find one. Somewhat likely to get there. Another roaming throne. Alright, I guess we'll uh, keep going at this point since we're not going to get to play a 4-drop. Still nothing. I'm sure I put some lands in this deck. Apparently not. Alright, we found one at long last. Pass it back. Opponent can activate Plaza to make one of their creatures indestructible. But we should have decent blocks lined up. Okay, so how about a Necro Duality into another scab? And then next turn we get to go crazy. A veterans attacking to trigger Anim. Now they will be able to turn this into a flyer, so that's kind of scary. But still gonna take it out. Alright, cut down answers either Phantom or Vanguard. And, uh, yeah, start with Champion into Roaming Throne looks good. I 
That's a lot of triggers. I'll just take this out now. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, our hand seems reasonable. Try and survive until we get our Necro Duality in play, and hopefully reap the rewards. Opponent on red, green aggro, so it's not going to be an easy matchup. And the etching of Kumano exiling our creatures also quite relevant when we've got a Headless Rider which cares about creatures dying. So we might need to go for the Throated. Swiss Spear with a counter, so our opponent's still off to a great start. Instead of playing Headless Rider, I might be better off keeping up Go for the Throat next turn, so we can block and then maybe bait out a Pump Spell. Because if I tap out for Headless Rider, this transforms, our opponent has a Burn Spell, then we're going to be pretty sad. Audacity on this camp. So I could go for Throat in response. Opponent doesn't get to draw off Audacity, only deals one with this camp. Still happy to trade for Etching. They could also have a Pump Spell in response. But, uh, yeah, I think we are still better off doing this now. Did not seem like they had a one mana instant. So I'll happily trade Scab for Etching, but opponent's not going to offer. Maybe if they do. All right. Let's see what they have. This is a Monstrous Rage. It's not the end of the world. An Ire only works on attacking creatures, which is why they didn't seem to have interaction last turn. So can we afford to play Necro Duality? Take another 4 down to 7. And then hopefully with an extra land we get to play 2 creatures next turn. It might be worth it. This is kind of our window. And then I'm hoping for an untapped land so we can play a scab alongside maybe Headless Rider. So we can immediately trigger it. Picnic Ruiner is fine. Oof, and our land is tapped. Yeah, that's a pretty huge difference here. So, and now instead of making an army of zombie tokens, we can only play one zombie that gets doubled. And at this point it might be Felstinger. And just try to trade, and then we still have the play of Rider plus Scab next turn. Since I'm not going to draw with the Felstinger at this point. But we could be dead. Play with Fire takes out Felstinger, exiles it. And let's see if we're dead. Still at three. And a scamp is next. Okay, so now we can make the play I wanted to make last turn. Exploit scamp itself. Which will result in quite a few triggers. And then we want to decline here since this scamp trigger comes from a creature that's already dead, so it's not gonna give us any additional zombies other than, of course, from Headless Rider. Which only triggers off non-tokens. And Godric is quite scary. If it can fly, we're dead. Okay, so can play another Skull Scab and then maybe start attacking. Yeah, I guess so. I think we still sack the other Skull Scab here. Could also sack Headless Rider, but that attacks into Godric pretty well. And then just decline here. Well, we've got all the zombie tokens we'll need. Question is, 
Are we still gonna die next turn with Sync's blockers? This seems relatively safe. If our opponent finds a pump spell for Scamp, that can also potentially present lethal. But they're gonna block with it now. Etching prevents Headless Rider from triggering once more. And they could just go face, hoping to find a play with fire, still going for the zombie token. Alright, well, let's see what happens. Spoon is at three. And our opponent explodes. Awesome nail biter here against a red green aggro. Okay, we're on the draw, and we will need to draw a few more lands here, but uh got a promising start. Champion into maybe a blade stitched. Opponent seems to be on a more controlling blue black deck. Prefer facing blue black than a white control deck, since exile effects are much harsher against cards like Headless Rider. Okay, so for now, maybe Skull Scab anyway. Definitely need to draw a couple of lanes. Want to get our Necro Duality going. Celestus is next. And no land. Hit for two. Play champion. And a Path of Peril will clean things up. Alright, Cavern helps. Probably still on Zombie. Poisoner can... Potentially take it out. I guess it would need one more mana. So they can go for it next turn. Okay, I think now... Our opponent's keeping up mana. They didn't cast the Poisoner, so it sort of implies that they have a counter spell or removal. I guess we can start by attacking with the Rider, see what happens. And then... Can name Golem and then play Roaming Throne to make it uncounterable, or better yet, try and resolve Necro Duality. But they might have a counter for it here. Although we did just play Cavern, so it's not super likely. Might just be a card draw spell like Memory Deluge. This one can name Golem. And I'll try Necro Duality, since getting this in place seems pretty important. Right, that resolves. And hopefully your opponent doesn't have any enchantment removal. So now they can take out our Headless Rider. Still get a zombie in return. And we found another one. But let's start here. Double Roaming Throne. And can attack or can leave this back as sacrifice fodder for a future exploit creature. Although don't have one in hand. Opponent accepts. We've also seen Shieldred's Edict, maybe a reason not to trade. Although they can always name non-token creature and get my roaming throne. So that wasn't really gonna save it. Okay, next up. Double Headless Rider. Attack with Throne, or do we want to double scamp first? Opponent could potentially cleave a Path of Peril, but now with Double Headless Rider, we would get a lot of replacements, so I think that's okay. Only two non tokens in play to trigger Headless Rider, but uh, would also benefit from Roaming Throne potentially. And Virtue takes out Scab. Yeah, that's a lot of tokens in return. Now maybe Path of Peril to clear all tokens. Yep. Well, at least it didn't cleave it. And oh wow, Felstinger was an awesome draw here since we've got both Necro Duality and Roaming Throne in play, we'll essentially get two Felstingers and four Exploit Triggers, 
and then each exploit trigger that resolves can draw us four cards and make someone lose four life. So that's a total of 16 cards we could draw at the cost of 16 life, but we could also target our opponent to help close out the game here, since we can also attack for 10. So how do we want to do this? Maybe uh, start by drawing ourselves, can maybe draw eight cards and then deal eight upstairs to uh, finish out the game here. And then we'll have a nice fresh hand we get to look at as well. And then we could sacrifice the real adversary and trigger Headless Rider. If this was a longer game, we could also try and keep the non-token in play, so that if they cast a sweeper, we get to trigger Headless Rider afterwards. So a lot of ways we can sequence here to play around to removal, but we should be able to just end things right now. Yeah, that's the power of Necro Duality against Control, if they don't have a way to remove it. But uh, against the white decks, that's usually going to be a bit harder to make happen between cards like Farewell and other enchantment removal. For damage to the opponent, they get to have a full grip here before we attack them for 10. And that'll do it. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and our hand's not exciting, but keepable. If we find an exploit creature, we've got a freebooter to sacrifice. And can maybe set up a turn three roaming throne if it dies. Opponent red-white. With turn one Epicure, so maybe a Boros tokens deck. Okay, do we prefer turn one champion? Our opponent's deck may not have a lot of removal. I wouldn't mind trading Freebooter for Epicure, so I think we'll start here. And then go for the throw, it might need to be used on the Warden, which can gain flying. Yep, there it is. And a Gleeful Demolition, so our opponent's off to a great start. Do they also have a Knight Errant here? That would be quite painful, yep. So pretty much the perfect start for Boros, and we're very far behind. Just look at how many permanents our opponents got on the battlefield on turn two. Bunnycorn also kind of a problem, so maybe we don't need to go for the throw to Warden just yet. And then what's our plan? Place Cab as a reasonable blocker. Opponent's gonna get to convoke another Knight Errant. So I'm not sure if I get to even block with a Freebooter to set up turn 3 Throne, but they might attack with a Knight Errant. And uh, then we'll take it from there, pretty much. And then if we find Felstinger, we can maybe block Bunnycorn. If not, I'll either need to go for the throat or try and grow a champion to compete with a bunnycorn. But of course, Warden's also going to be its own problem that we cannot block. And if our opponent goes land recruiter, we're also very dead. So yeah, there's just no real way we survive this. I will jump. Even though Bunnycorn, I guess, is an even larger threat next turn. Don't think we want Scab. It does make a few tokens alongside Roaming Throne, perhaps, but... I think Felstinger would be a better draw. Third Roaming Throne, not so much. So we could go champion, keep up, go for the throats. Take out bunny corn, still probably die to land recruiter. And yep, there is the land. And there's a recruiter. Bunnycorn down, can eat the Warden, 
And then this is 16, 18, 21. So I have to trump a knight errant. We're at three. And a champion the draw. With an extra land, this could have been a reasonable turn going champion plus roaming throne. But we're just going to get swarmed by tokens anyway. And our opponent had another recruiter. All right, GG's. Not much we can do here. And yeah, kind of showing the power of the Boros Tokens deck. Which, yeah, I truly believe is one of the best decks in standard. Gleeful Demolition just leads to some obscene starts. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Got a nice 1 2 3 curve. Opponent with turn 1 veteran. Yeah, I think we'll save the adversary until we can maybe pay 3 mana. Get in for 3. And then Felstinger could sacrifice itself. Ideally, we find a different creature to play next turn. Because getting Felstinger down after Roaming Throne provides more value. But we probably need to play just to hit our land drops. Okay. Could attack and trade for two of their creatures. Maybe just send the scab, which I don't mind trading for two of their things. And then we've got the Roaming Throne on four, and then hopefully Felstinger on five. Okay, Adlin can not really set up a great attack. And now we get double the champion triggers. Think we're attacking. If our opponent's got a Brutal Cathar, they can remove this. Does our opponent want to attack with Adlin? Can always take the hit and eat the token. Close call. I guess we're not really trying to race, we're just trying to take over the late game with all the extra card draw. So I'll play it safe. Ralph could be kind of scary, although at least Roaming Throne is an artifact, which they cannot attack past. Okay, so going for Felstinger here, definitely an option. Could also build up our board with a Headless Rider first, and then start sacrificing stuff, which might play out a bit better. Another Vanguard. Okay. And we might see Skralv protect Adlin. In which case I might have to trade for Throne. They don't. Alright, so now Adversary into Felstinger looks good. Get double the Headless Rider triggers. And this champion is mighty large. And then I can sack another creature here. This is getting a little sketchy, but gotta do it for value. Alright, and then we still get to play a land and another champion here. So now we've got Go for the Throat, which doesn't answer Skrelv. So we need them to use Skrelv before we can go for the Throat. If our opponent has Brutal Cathar, I guess they can't pay the ward from Roaming Throne yet. So we should be safe there. Could start attacking with Champion, but now that we're at 10... We still have to be a little bit careful. 
But our opponent's probably trumping anyway. A veteran down. And discard some tapped lanes. I guess we only need to discard one. Can pump the team with Scab next turn as well. And any and all trades are pretty good for us while we have a Headless Rider in play. Alright, opponent's committing Adlin. So I can just trade for Felstinger if they don't use Skrelv. And now we can trade for Roaming Throne. And then the token here... I guess could trade for Felstinger just so we trigger Headless Rider. get some triggers here in memory of Roaming Throne. And then now we can go for the throats to our heart's content. Take out those vanguards maybe and set up an all-out attack. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Double Champion of the Parish is a nice start. And then we can maybe Headless Rider before sacrificing to Felstinger. For now I'll attack, don't really want to stay back to trade. want to try and get our Headless Rider going first. And they have the Lightning Strike here. And as long as our opponent doesn't have an etching of Kumano in play, at least they can't exile our zombies, so we'll get the zombie token. And then next turn Felstinger, potentially sacrificing itself. Could also trade for Godric, which is certainly reasonable. And then we'll still get a 2-2 token, which I can sacrifice next turn while growing champion. So we're going to want to attack first, play Tapped Reef maybe, but we can play Stinger and then sank the Zombie Token, draw a few cards and take it from there and our opponent concedes. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn to Scab, can sacrifice itself to the Fell Stinger if we'd like. And then still get the extra zombie token, put it on a wide deck. Adversary also an option, but let's go with a skull scab. Even though it doesn't block as well as a 2-3. Put on blue white with veteran. If they don't offer the trade, it could imply brutal Cathar in hand, or maybe Harbin wanting them to preserve their creatures. They got in anyways. Alright, Champion of the Parish is very nice. So now I'm liking Champion into another Skull Scab instead. And this can exploit itself. And then now do we attack? Sure. Then think our opponent's trading, and then next turn Felstinger can sack a zombie token, which does not trigger Skull Scab, but uh, we'll still draw us two cards. Okay, Siege Veteran. Could pump the officer here. Goes for itself. So Felstinger sack a zombie token looks good. Find a cut down, which we could put to use. If I play an untapped land here, 
Although playing an untapped land does have a significant cost, because it means I wouldn't be able to necessarily play Adversary and pay the 3 next turn. I would like to make an attack with Champion with Cutdown available, in case our opponent tries to double block. We can maybe punish them. So I think we just go for Tapped Reef then. I guess we could also keep up Cutdown to take out Brutal Cathar before they reset the counters on Champion. So it's a tough call. I think we still go for Tapped Reef and pass. Siege Veteran triggers. And our opponent passes with mana untapped. Okay, so now they might have a counter spell in hand or just a reinforcement to make some tokens. Can play Blade Stitched and then still cut down Valiant Veteran perhaps. So let's try that approach. And with Cavern or Scabs uncounterable. Yeah, that's not gonna work. As they'll find out here. So now we can attack with Champion at least. Could also get in with Felstinger, and then if they block with a token, we just take out Valiant Veteran. That point's just gonna chump and trade, so no need to cut down just yet. And I'll hang on to Adversary for next turn, I think. Problem now is that Brutal Cathar would be a 3-3, so we can't cut it down in response. So maybe I was still better off taking out Veteran before they could keep up another counterspell. Knight Errant with Convoke. Yeah, that's also reason to take out their creature. Wasn't really expecting it. Okay, that happens. They can only find one and two drops, but they did find two of them, including a frontliner. Siege Veteran triggers. Counter on Knight Errant. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna catch them off guard necessarily. I think we just take out Veteran now, so we can tap out next turn. Although, I'm likely just playing this and paying 3, so I'll still have Cutdown available later. Sure. Alright, Freebooter I guess we could have played, but uh... Yeah, let's go for Adversary, pay 3 mana to grow Champion some more. And attack. Bones jumping. The Siege Veteran's definitely a problem here, since they can just keep jumping turn after turn. And we haven't found one of our cards to go over the top, like a Roaming Throne or a Necro Duality. Another Siege Veteran. Yep, yeah, that one. We also cannot cut down. Growing the tokens. And another champion the draw. A little bit late to the party, but still worth playing. And then get in with Champion of the Perished. Tainted Adversary could also attack. Might end up trading for some tokens. And eventually Restless Reef can also get in. Although milling more frontliners is a bit of a drawback. That opponent's going to play the reinforcements. So this is where saving the cutdown could pay off if we can shrink down some of their creatures here. Alright, so we got rewarded for holding cutdown, finally. Mm, 
But if our opponent plays Harbin, we could still be dead. And I kind of fear for it here. Harbin we also wouldn't have been able to take out while Veteran's in play. Picking up Knight Errants is pretty good value too. So you're getting outvalued by the Soldier's deck, which isn't something that happens frequently, but our opponent's got a bit of a different build with Knight Errants as opposed to the more straightforward builds. So they've got six blockers back, and they might find some more here. So I don't think we'll have enough to sneak in, especially with another reinforcements coming up. So this feels like a bit of a lost cause at this point. They can start chipping in with a flyer. They can chump champion all day long while making more tokens in return. And a land's not gonna help. Okay, so I think we go out in a blaze of glory here. Attack all. And hope for the best. Another reinforcements. Means more blockers. And the opponent's playing the build with make disappear. So yeah, despite countering through Cavern of Souls, our opponent's still gonna easily win this game. Just could not find some of our uh, late game stuff. Not every deck can keep chumping a champion turn after turn, but Siege Veteran goes a long way. Alright, GG's. Bowden falls to 8, gets a bunch more Siege Veteran triggers, and I'd be shocked if we survive next turn. I think an all-out attack is lethal, and they can also use Veteran to pump the team. Alright. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's far from exciting, but it looks keepable. We'll have to struggle with a few tapped lands, maybe. Opponent with turn one, mountain. Probably still better to get the uh, reef out of the way, even though we could have kept up cut down for maybe a hasty two drop. All right, still nothing. And now we've got cut down available. And then, yeah, Necro Duality gives us a nice late game. Godric, we sadly cannot cut down. So, can go for Headless Rider, which can at least replace itself with a zombie if it dies. Although, waiting for Necro Duality is also reasonable. Right, play with Fire takes it out. Take another three. A bit of a strange game from the red aggro deck. They must have a lot of burn spells or additional godricks in hand. I think this is our window to resolve Necro Duality and then next turn kind of go off with Champion and Felstinger. I'll still leave the zombie back for any haste creatures they might have. Mishra's Foundry was probably their draw for the turn. If I block, it's somewhat likely they have a Monstrous Rage as well to still trample over for a bunch. Although, we don't necessarily want them to use it later when they can fly with Godric. And maybe burn us out that way. Although I would like some Sacrifice Fodder for Felstinger, so... I guess we'll just take it for now. No Monstrous Rage. Opponent passes, and Roaming Throne is also a pretty nice draw. So, 
could go with Roaming Throne, play Champion or Champion into Roaming Throne also makes sense. And then they might take out Champion in response, but we'll have two of them. Sounds good to me. And there's a Lightning Strike. And now double the Champion Triggers and get two Roaming Thrones. Awesome. Well, this uh, Champion went from a 1-1 to a 6-6 in one turn. And now we can probably even consider an attack. Godric gaining flying is still a concern. And they probably just have another one in hand is my guess. And wow, our opponent explodes. All right, I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Have to decide how we want to sequence here. But uh, turn one champion, turn two scab, and now we can turn three rider. And then next turn we can play cavern if our opponent's keeping up a counter spell. So we can catch them off guard. Necroduality would be nice to resolve. Although we'll need to get our Restless Reef in play to help cast it. Sank for three. And yeah, we're just gonna keep up the pressure here with a Headless Rider, I think. Bones at 11. And if they tap out for a creature, we've got to go for the throat. And that's enough for a concession. Yeah, Cavern, pretty good against counter spells as it turns out. All right, so we got to see this blue-black zombie deck in action. And yeah, I'm quite impressed by what it's capable of, especially once we get Necro Duality and Roaming Throne going. Triggers get to go pretty crazy. So it's a lot of fun and kind of a way to revitalize the blue-black zombie deck that never really broke through in standard. But now hopefully we've got enough tools to make it semi-competitive. The deck is still going to struggle against sweepers that exile our stuff, such as Sunfall and Farewell, since we don't get to trigger or Headless Rider, and uh, then good starts from a deck like Monoret Aggro can certainly give us some issues if they're on the play with maybe a turn one Kumano. They can try and burn us out before we get a foothold in the game, since our deck is a little bit slow to get going sometimes. So it's not going to be the most competitive deck in standard, but definitely a lot of fun. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.